Hello everybody, my name is Maddie and in October of 2022, I realised that life is way too short to be working a 9 to 5, Monday through to Friday. So I quit my full time job and decided to pack up and travel solo. Bought a camera and here we are today. Hello everybody and welcome to London. I'm currently at the Christmas markets with Liv and Zoe. So it's their last night here in London and I met them here today. We're just walking around to see what we can get up to. But you guys, I'm in heaven. It's making me want to go back home for Christmas. Obviously I'm not going to, but look at this. We've just come to the London Eye, but we've just did the conversion. It's actually 65 Australian dollars and none of us are ready to pay that. So we're just going to stand outside. Tank. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I joined up with my tour group last night. and I haven't picked up my camera since, but basically this morning we hopped on a ferry from London and then we are now in Paris. It's about quarter past seven at night. We're all going to head out to dinner. We are going up a high rise that has a view of the Eiffel Tower. I'm not too sure what it's called, so I'll pop it on the screen here. I'm going to take you guys along. I'm not sure how much footage I will get um, because obviously I want to be present, but nonetheless, I'll take you guys with me. Pardon my awful French language, but bonjour! Welcome to the first official Paris vlog, guys. The past few days have been an absolute whirlwind. Uh, meeting the new tour group. The tour I'm on goes for 28 days, so I have spent the past couple of days just getting to know everyone. This morning I just caught uh, two trams and I'm on my way to the Louvre Museum. I'm gonna see the Mona Lisa. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm so excited. I can't believe I actually got on two trams and here I am. It's about a five minute walk to the Louvre from here. It is eight o'clock in the morning. The sun's not quite up. It is really cold, it's like six degrees. I'm just so happy to be here, you guys. Alrighty, I'll see you when I get there. I made it. If you guys don't know, the Louvre is basically an art gallery or a museum here in Paris, most famously known for the Mona Lisa. Honestly, cry right now I feel like <laughs> this may not seem big to some people but seeing the Louvre has been on my like bucket list I don't like calling it a bucket list but my bucket list since I was like 12 the Mona Lisa and it was really funny because a lady was like running up to it because I got there first basically and I could hear her high heels I was like oh my god she's gonna like push me out of the way or something but it was fine I got there and it was good I moved out of the way pretty quick so they could get their photo it's been like five minutes and they're still there so I feel like I don't have to say anything about the Mona Lisa but this is an oil painting that was painted back in 1503 by Leonardo da Vinci. It's basically being described as the best, most visited, most written about, most sung about painting in the world. And I just got to see it with my own two eyes. The plan for the day is to just keep walking around Paris, stay in the Louvre for a little bit, look at all the art. I need to be at the Eiffel Tower at 1.30, so let's just see where the day takes us. I'm 
speaking quiet because there's no one in here and it is very quiet. I'll be the first to say that I'm not necessarily into the arts, like I don't study it, I haven't researched a lot about it, but just being able to be here, it's honestly breathtaking. The Louvre was opened on the 10th of August in 1793 and is now home to over 600,000 pieces of artwork. You honestly could spend all day in here just walking looking and it's not just paintings either so there's crowns and jewelry from the french monarch there is statues and also like dinnerware as well or dinner dinner sets <laughs> it is actually so easy to get lost in here because there's so many like nooks and crannies with different artworks it opens your eyes and makes you appreciate artwork i've just been walking around the streets of paris looking for a penna chocolate and a croissant and I found the most sweetest little bakery or patisserie. So I'm gonna try the little panna chocolate. I'm gonna send a photo to my family first to make them jealous. But I've just found a little park across from the patisserie. So I'm gonna sit down and eat it and just watch life go by. You guys, I've made some um, bird friends. <laughs> they obviously like panna chocolate. Just stopped in at a little cafe i will show you guys the name i'm going to try just a normal cappuccino but like i said i think it's important that you just watch the world go by sometimes when you're traveling because it's so easy to get caught up in your to-do list and your bucket list and everything that you've ever wanted to see so this is a reminder to just sit down take a break and do nothing Is the best coffee I've ever had, hands down. I just caught the metro back to my accommodation to pop my backpack down because I'm on the way to the Eiffel Tower and I don't want any extra weight when I'm walking up to the second floor. I can't wait to show you guys because this is like a really magical moment for me and I hope it is for you guys too. I've just made it to the second floor which is like the second part of the leg until it goes vertical. I really hope that makes sense. I'll like point and put a picture there. The Eiffel Tower opened in 1889 and since then over 300 million people have visited. The tower took two years, two months and five days to build using seven and a half tons of iron and 2.5 million rivets. I made it to the top and I thought that I booked the ticket where you walk up but apparently I didn't so I got the elevator all the way up so I'm stoked. But at the moment I am currently standing on the highest you can go on the Eiffel Tower and it's 280 meters. I've made it to the Arc de Triomphe. Basically this is a building that was built for the unknown soldiers who fought for the French Revolution and they have what's called an eternal flame here. So I'm going to have to do some research but there are names all over here as well so I'm thinking that they are the ones who like they knew that they had lost. I did some digging and most of these names are generals who serve and the underlined names signify those who were killed in action. Also fun fact there's a roundabout behind here and it's so dangerous that when you drive on it you are no longer insured even if you pay your insurance this roundabout is not covered. Oh this one's hiding. Does that mean it's going to be tough? I think it just means it's going to taste even better. Oh, look at that. That is not okay. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I've picked up two crewmates. <laughs> and we're coming to a restaurant and we're trying sales, which Ben has kindly gotten out of his shell for me. Lunch and we're ready for it. Oh. You gotta bite it like a lot to really get it through. It's not that bad. I know, right? It looks a lot worse than it actually is. It has like the texture of a mushroom. It's like a very damp mushroom. <laughs> mm. Is it down? 
I'm not claiming you've eaten it until you swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's gone. Not bad. Not bad. After we had eaten our snails, we came back because we had a cabaret show booked for tonight. We all got ready, went down, and it was probably like, I don't know, maybe like half an hour, an hour into the show, and the lights went out, everything stopped, and we thought it was a part of the show. Apparently, France had a nationwide blackout. The show got cut. We all come home in our jammies, going to shower shortly. Mish, my roommate and I, we ordered Maccas. So <laughs> that's gonna be us for the night. Tomorrow we have a big day heading to Switzerland. So probably won't chat to you much tomorrow, but we'll see how the day goes.